Hey folks, Rich here at RCMFormer.com. Thanks for checking out this video on the Rock Hobby 64mm F16 Falcon ARF from uh, Motion RC. Uh, Motion RC is the uh, exclusive distributor of this, so if you want to check it out and some of their other exclusive models, uh, just go to uh, uh, MotionRC.com. They have this and others, and uh, they seem to be carrying their new outfit. They seem to be carrying a lot of a lot of nice stuff and a lot of exclusive things to them. This is the first airplane I have had from them, and I'm overall uh, pretty pretty impressed by it. Um, for a video of the flight performance on this thing, I went ahead and separated it into a separate video, and I'll put a link at the end of this video that you can click on, or you can go to uh, RC Informer on YouTube, um, rcinformer.com, or RC Informer on Facebook, and, uh, and, and you'll be able to find the, uh, the flight video for this as well. Um, I'm pretty impressed by this thing. The, the scale detail for such a small model is, uh, is actually pretty intense for what it is. Uh, as the video goes on, I'm going to show you uh, really up close some of the detail that this thing has. And uh, it's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty spectacular. It just really looks nice uh, for, for uh, such a small model. Um, it is a simple four-channel airplane. It's uh, aileron, elevator, nose wheel steering and uh, throttle. There's no rudder, but one could probably easily uh, be added to it with a servo just by cutting the rudder out. But, uh, but as it is, um, it flies fantastic and, 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 and it, it, it really does what you need it to do. It, it's, it's the kind of airplane that's really good for somebody that wants a small scale looking airplane that's not real complex and you can put it in the back of a car without changing anything. In fact, you can put it in the back of a car or most trunks and still put a whole bunch of other stuff in there and when you get to where you're going, just take it out and fly it. It's probably best suited for, uh, for flying on pavement. Uh, however, if you watch the video, all I fly off of is grass. Our grass is pretty well maintained and it handles uh, fantastic um, on grass. Um, it, maneuver wise, it'll do uh, most anything. It, it flies uh, nice in slow flight. It doesn't have any bad tendencies when you slow down to land. It doesn't tip stall or any of that kind of stuff. And it can handle some rugged landings. I, pounded this thing into the runway a few times and, and, and the landing gear is tough and flexible so it, it'll handle all that kind of stuff. But it'll do loops, um, it'll do rolls, it, it does uh, you know cubinate type maneuvers as well and uh, it flies inverted fantastic. Um, it's not a rocket plane, uh, it's not slow, it's not fast, it kind of does sort of moderate speed uh, but overall I'm just impressed with uh, uh, the flight performance and, uh, and the way it looks. Um, as you're about to see in the following video, um, uh, uh, another thing I really like about it is its construction. It has a very nice overall finish on it, and it has a lot of nice um, features to it um, that, that really kind of ease uh, the process of maintaining it or getting into the motor and things like that. Um, the following video, guys, I'm going to really review the entire airplane and show you all the parts up close so you'll see you know, um, uh, really the detail of everything on it. Uh, I'm going to show you some of those real nice features that I like about it and, uh, and, uh, and uh, then I'll, I'll go into some kind of suggestions and some building techniques uh, for getting this airplane going. Um, without further delay guys, let's get on with the video. To start off the review of the F-16 Falcon ARF from uh, Rock Hobby carried by uh, Motion RC. We got the outside of the box. It's kind of nice to see a, a new brand out there. Uh, Rock Hobbies by FMS and Motion RC is a, a pretty new company out there. Uh, we have the uh, 70 millimeter or 700 millimeter F-16 Falcon uh, ready to run and uh, everything arrived nicely via UPS. Let's go ahead and uh, open it up and see what's on the inside. With the outer box removed we can see a nice colorful uh, packaging job they did for this uh, F-16. Uh, you can see all the dimensions there on the uh, left side. Uh, box is in immaculate condition so let's go ahead and uh, open it up uh, get all the parts out and uh, see what is inside with the box top removed we can see all the parts are nicely packaged everything's individually bagged uh, and they're all put inside this really strong foam crate let's go ahead and get all the parts out lay them out and see what we got here's the layout of all the parts that came out of the box and so far I'm really impressed the quality is uh, just very impressive very nice paint job really nice details uh, the fuselage has very nice uh, decals, very nice details on it. It has a super paint job on it. Uh, you have the uh, two uh, wing panels here, the two elevator panels here, two ventral fins, uh, two nose cones. Not sure why, but uh, you know we'll look at the instructions uh, and, and talk about that later. Uh, you have a, a bag here of linkages and a screwdriver, uh, some glue, vertical stabilizer, 
a set of three landing gear legs and wheels, and uh, an ordnance package, which here there's uh, two external fuel tanks, uh, two under the wing missiles, and uh, uh, two uh, wing tip missiles. Now, let me go ahead and show you a closer look at uh, some of the individual parts and uh, show you some of the features that they have. The first part I'm going to show you here is the fuselage. It is just super nice. The uh, quality of it, for especially for such a small model, all the details that they put into it. One interesting thing to uh, note on the uh, nose cone is they have a magnet uh, here, and the two nose cones they provided also have a magnet. So obviously this is a magnet uh, sort of just uh, bolt on there. You just put it right on there. Now I don't know if that's for weight or for or maybe it gets damaged easy so they gave you a second nose cone to put on there but uh, but that's uh, that's simply uh, how that goes on. Um, regard, uh, with further regards here to the detail you can see all these little plastic details and stickers and so forth, so forth they put on there and uh, man I'm really impressed with this thing. In fact it's so cool looking man I, I couldn't even imagine uh, it would be nice to see CFMS make a 90 millimeter version of this uh, uh, and I, could I couldn't even imagine what the detail would look like. But you can see this uh, really nice uh, gun detail with uh, some plastic parts uh, that they used. And as you move along the back of the airplane here, uh, you can see all the panel lines, details, uh, a nice notch here for the uh, horizontal stabilizer to glue in. Uh, as we move back here to the tail cone, um, you can see the fan in there mounted towards the back. It is a 64 millimeter fan that drives this thing. And uh, as I flip it around here, you can see the strap that bolts on, so you can get into that compartment if you ever need to service the motor for anything. Uh, you can see probably the ESC, yep, is buried uh, down in there, uh, so it's in a great place to cool it down. And this right here is just an open hole, a cheater hole, uh, that helps feed the fan uh, in addition to the scoop, the intake up front. Now, uh, here's a couple of firsts here that I have not really ever seen on a model before, and it's definitely something worth mentioning. These servos here, actually show the uh, torque, they also show the voltage, the type of servo, analog, and the uh, Rock Hobby logo on them. So I, I've never really seen a servo that told you exactly what it was about and uh, you know what kind of torque it pulls and everything so and the speed even is on there. So really Im impressive and that's a first for that I've ever seen on a, on, on a model. And you can see the four servos here. Uh, these are your aileron servos, these are your elevator servos. Uh, super nice quality. Um, another thing that's a first here that I kind of really haven't seen, maybe some others have seen this, but uh, this is where the landing gear mounts. It's just a fixed gear, so you can uh, either hand launch this thing uh, or you can set it up with uh, landing gear if you like, but uh, uh, there's this uh, little latch that holds the gear in, so you just pop the gear into place. Uh, you kind of stick this thing back in, pop it into place, and the gear comes on and off uh, that easy. So if you want to convert from belly landing to, uh, to gear, fixed gear, uh, it's that easy to do. And the nose gear just fits through uh, the scoop in there. And there's just a set screw. You can put a, a wrench in there and uh, take the, the, the steerable nose wheel off uh, that way as well. So anyway, guys, really nice detail. Here's a couple of extra cheater holes on the side. Again, there's a lot of air uh, that they designed to feed uh, this fan. Uh, so it gets lots and lots of air and uh, can put out um, uh, lots of power. Uh, now let's go ahead and uh, get the cockpit open here, battery compartment. And I usually like to see this go on the other way, you know, the tongue and groove up front and the uh, magnet uh, in the back. But this thing does have a real nice grab to it. It's a real solid magnet, so I really don't foresee there any, being any problem with that thing uh, coming off. Uh, nice battery compartment and they went ahead and put a nice battery strap that they actually secured and glued down in there. So uh, another nice thing uh, that you don't have to mess with. Sometimes battery compartments don't have the best straps in the world, but this looks like a real nice one. Uh, typical via FMS, everything's uh, wired in there nicely, so there's really no mystery as to everything's labeled with, uh, uh, with logos, so you know exactly where everything goes. Here's the, uh, the steering servo for the, uh, for the uh, nose gear. Uh, but anyway, guys, overall, uh, real impressed. Uh, very nice detail on this fuselage. Uh, it, it looks like just a superb airplane. Great styling and everything. And uh, uh, just overall, uh, kind of A-plus for this thing. I really like, uh, like the way it looks. Here's a quick look at uh, one of the wings at one of the elevator panels. They're uh, very similar. Uh, they're uh, hinged. Uh, looks like very nicely. Now, I typically like to see a third hinge on a large surface like this. Uh, usually like one in the middle, but uh, you know, I've had other jets that they only do two and it seems to hold up nice. 
not a bad idea to, to tug on these a little bit and make sure that they got enough glue in there. And it looks like they did a really solid job. Everything looks like it's kind of lined up uh, really nicely. Good detail on the wing and everything. These are the, the spots where, uh, you know, you can put the uh, drop tank and the, uh, the uh, um, uh, outboard missile and the uh, wingtip missile as well. Uh, they put all the clevises on for you, which is nice. And these are typical FMS uh, clevises that uh, I've seen on a lot of their other models. Uh, but usually you have to put them on, but it's nice they're already installed here. Same thing with the uh, elevator. It is uh, already uh, hinged, and uh, as you can see, guys, real nice quality and uh, very good paint jobs on these things. Here's a quick look at the vertical stabilizer on this plane. Uh, just like the wings and everything else, nice paint job on it, real, real good detail on it. Uh, there's no rudder control on this airplane. It would be something that would probably be easy to put on. Just mount a servo somewhere up here, cut out your rudder, and you'd have rudder control. Uh, but the plane's small, it really doesn't need it. Probably about the only complaint that I would have about this thing really is some of these decals they kind of put on uh, kind of crooked. It's a small thing, but uh, you know, maybe the night shift was working on this thing and they got a few of these crooked, but very, very small, small uh, complaint that I have about it. Uh, otherwise, um, here is another first that I have never seen in uh, aviation or RC history. And uh, I don't know if uh, I should mark this day on my calendar or what, but uh, there's two tubes in here. And typically, you are given uh, contact cement with these planes. Well, FMS has gone the distance, and they are now giving us epoxy, which is really nice. Now, it says cure time 5 to 10 minutes, uh, so this is probably some quick epoxy. Uh, I usually still like to use 30 minute or 15 minute on stuff like this. But, uh, but very nice, guys. We're going in the right direction, and uh, this plane has epoxy included. Last but not least included with the kit is a, a really nice instruction manual. This is very, very typical of FMS, uh, providing probably some of the, uh, the best uh, manuals around. And uh, this is no exception. Uh, and you can tell this is a Rock, Rock Hobbies uh, brand. Uh, as you flip this open, uh, I read through this a little bit already, and uh, it, it reads very well. They definitely have somebody, uh, you know, doing these uh, in very good English and really explaining uh, a lot of these things to you. Even mixing the epoxy, you can see right down here, they even show that. So really good for somebody who's uh, learning how to do this. Flat spots on all of the, uh, the shafts and so forth. And uh, they tell you the right and wrong positions of putting the nose cone on and the uh, ventral fins and so forth. So uh, lots of detail. There's even somewhere in here where they talk about, um, here, here's the CG. So they give you a good CG as I fly the airplane. I'll let you know uh, how well the, that works out. And it looks like that's measured uh, from uh, the aft end of the wing forward. So that's a little bit different the way they do it. But, uh, you know, as I fly it, I'll let you know how that CG works out. And uh, here you go, they talk about actually twisting uh, control, uh, twisting the uh, horns and so forth, or the uh, rods on the horns to get the uh, proper rate. And here you go, they give you some, uh, some rate information as well. So uh, elevator and aileron deflection, 15, 10, 17, and 11 for high and low rates. So uh, real nice that they're starting to, to do all that stuff uh, in there. Um, overall, again, guys, uh, real impressed. Good English on this thing. And of course, uh, with a lot of other the FMS airplanes, uh, this one is no different, uh, an ESC manual. So it's nice to have this manual if you need to reprogram something uh, on your ESC. They give you a full guide as to uh, how to do it. So anyway, guys, uh, without uh, further delay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get on with the building of this thing. And uh, as I go through it, I'll point out uh, any uh, additions, changes, upgrades, improvements I think will make the kit uh, even better for you. When it comes to the assembly process of this plane, it's really quite simple. There's really only five major components that uh, glue to the fuselage. Uh, you have the, uh, the two wings, you have the two elevator halves, and the vertical stabilizer that just glues into this slot. You also have the two ventral fins, and you just want to epoxy all those in place. There is the ordnance package, which I'm actually going to leave off just because I don't want to include the extra drag and weight uh, on the airplane. Um, but it's really quite simple. You mix epoxy and glue these parts on. Now before gluing all these components on, a couple things uh, that you want to do that the instructions really talk you through quite nicely. It is a very good instruction manual. Uh, one, one tip they have in the instruction manual that's actually quite nice is to just take some tape and sort of just uh, tape it down uh, to these painted surfaces here as best that you can. And as you 
pull it off, it's going to take a lot of the paint off. So if you have some inexpensive like scotch type tape like you see right here, uh, as you can see just attaching it and then peeling this off, does get quite a bit of the uh, paint off. Now as you can see here as well, there's also these, uh, these little dotted areas that stick up and they sort of prevent the surfaces from contacting. And uh, another thing I would suggest doing is just sort of filing those down. Uh, you want to use a light grade sandpaper because uh, this is actually EPS uh, foam and uh, you don't want to use something that's too harsh on it because it will tear it up. And you only want to lightly sand it, but just using a little uh, block of wood or a sanding bar or something like this with some sandpaper, um, you want to go ahead and just lightly sand away those high spots and uh, just get the majority of the paint off. But again, you don't want to you don't want to roughen these up too much uh, and use it too gr too heavy of a sandpaper because it'll really tear up the foam. But as you can see here, uh, this completed one, um, most of the uh, the paint is off of it, and the surface has been actually roughed up uh, just a little bit, so the epoxy uh, will bond to it. Now, if you can see in the background, I did the same thing to the wings. They're all scuffed up just as well, just with some light sandpaper. You don't want to, again, you don't want to sand too much because you can change the, uh, the shape of the uh, contacting surfaces and you don't want to do that. But anyway, once all the surfaces are sanded down, you want to do the same thing to the inside there of that rudder channel. Very lightly sand away those little areas that stick up and then very carefully just, just scuff it a little bit so it's rough so the epoxy uh, will stick to it. Here's a quick look inside the uh, rudder channel I just talked about. You can see, just put a little scotch tape on here again. Uh, and then just peeling it off real fast, just like the instructions say. Again, it is a good manual. You'll get all this stuff off and you can scuff it. Also, again, these high spots that you see right here, these dotted areas, you want to take uh, some sandpaper and just lightly file those, uh, those down uh, so the, uh, the rudder will uh, contact much better. Uh, also, the wings, again, just as the instructions show you, you can use uh, some scotch tape to uh, tear all that stuff off. Same thing with the wings. And I scuffed mine with a little bit of mild sandpaper. And again, don't sand too much because you don't want to change the shape of this thing. And uh, then just mix your epoxy the way the instructions show you and uh, glue all the surfaces on. When gluing on the first wing, it's not a bad idea to cradle the airplane and let the wing uh, sit upright while the epoxy dries. When it comes to gluing on the second wing, you want to cradle it similar to the way you did the first wing. Except in this case, you see I had to use uh, two tables. Uh, or two boxes or whatever you can find and if you can position the airplane like this you can glue the second wing on just like you did the first and let it dry. Once you get the wings glued on this thing guys everything goes on this airplane pretty fast. It's a very very simple build and, uh, and a very nice build because everything all the parts uh, fit really well. Uh, the suggestions I'm going to make is when gluing your wings on just like, uh, just like I previously showed you here uh, I would use 30 minute epoxy for those um, depending on the epoxy glue that you're going to use, how fast, whether it's 5 minute, 15 or 30 minute, really depends on you and how, how good you are with epoxy. So uh, when it comes to large surfaces like this, larger surfaces like the wings, I like more time to work to clean it up. So uh, I use 30 minute for these. Uh, the uh, elevators here were so small and so easy, I went ahead and used the 5 minute epoxy that they gave you. And as long as you have towels standing by and you have alcohol standing by to clean that up with, um, these tail fins uh, go on real quick with five minute epoxy. Uh, this rudder is such a big, or this vertical stabilizer is such a big gluing surface, I use 30 minute epoxy on it as well. So, a um, couple other things, the uh, ventral fins down here, I used contact cement on those um, because those are the kind of thing that you might uh, end up tearing off or whatever, and epoxy uh, is pretty permanent when you put it on there and it doesn't come off easy, whereas um, if you use uh, contact cement, uh, you can just re-glue them on. Same thing with the wingtip missiles. I like to use uh, contact cement on those as well uh, just because I'm always tearing missiles off whether I'm pulling it in and out of the car or whether I'm you know snagging on the runway or something. The missile will come off nicely if it's if it's uh, most of the time if, if it's put on with uh, contact cement but if you use epoxy uh, it's pretty much uh, going to be a permanent bond. So uh, once again to sum it up I use 30 minute here, 5 minute here, 30 minute here, and then for your ventral fins and for your uh, wingtip rockets, uh, I would go ahead and use uh, contact cement, uh, which will make it easier um, uh, to put them uh, back on and off if they should get uh, torn off. One real important item to note when uh, building this plane, when you're uh, gluing the wings, the uh, elevators, and the rudder on, uh, is uh, you can use alcohol on this thing. Sometimes alcohol will attack uh, paint 
and uh, kind of ruin the finish but not with this airplane whatever paint that they used on this uh, I used plenty of alcohol to clean up all the excess epoxy and as you can see here uh, the finish remained really undisturbed so uh, you know feel pretty confident that if you use epoxy on this thing uh, you'll be able to use uh, just normal rubbing alcohol on this thing to get the epoxy off without having to worry about uh, ruining the finish. Here's a look at my uh, completed F-16 and uh, it's a real nice airplane guys. It went together well. Uh, it's really a fun build. Everything fit nicely and uh, there's only a few parts to glue on and then you're, uh, you're good to go. Uh, it, it's your option if you want to put the uh, additional ordnance on there. I think the wingtip missiles look really good on there and finish it off. Um, uh, I ch usually choose to leave the uh, drop tanks and the other missiles off um, just because I like to get a little extra speed out of the airplane and, uh, and the plane will actually fly a little bit longer as well because you don't have all that extra drag on there. So the airplane flies fine with them on there. Uh, it does fly a little bit slower and uh, a little less flight time out of it because of that drag again. But, uh, but uh, anyway, overall guys, really nice, uh, nice build, really nice looking model. Here's a quick look at the underside of the airplane. I thought I'd uh, show you this because it's a pretty nice setup that they have here. Uh, the servo arrangement's pretty simple, just two aileron servos, two elevator servos, and they're all Y-harnessed and each go into their own uh, channel. Uh, your fifth servo is uh, up front for your steerable nose wheel. It's actually up in the battery compartment like we saw before. Um, but what I wanted to show you back here was uh, this compartment here. You go ahead and you can remove this strap with just uh, these two screws right here. And then they design for you a nice access hatch. And let me do this with two hands here. This whole thing comes off and it's actually magnetic. And uh, you can see right here they put uh, magnets here, 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 and here. And then this uh, one strap kind of goes around the fan to hold this whole thing on. But you can see in here everything's really nicely kind of packaged in here and they give you really good access to everything. So. Uh, they used contact cement to put this plastic piece on that you can always get off. This is just the speed controller down in here. Some of the wiring from the battery compartment kind of pushes into here and, uh, and the 64 millimeter fan. So uh, everything is really nicely arranged in here and really easy to get at. And uh, it's real simple getting this thing back on here. And uh, you can see it just kind of goes right back on and, and the magnets kind of hold it in place most of the time. And then you just go ahead and you put your, uh, your strap back on the back and, uh, and this whole thing goes together. So if you need to service it or get in there, uh, again, they did a really good job with this uh, access panel. It really lets you get in there and uh, do any work that you might need to do to the airplane and it's real easy to get in there. One last item I wanted to show you here was the, uh, the nose cone on this plane. Again, they gave you two as we saw in the beginning. I'm still really not sure why, but I think it's because they molded the, this one incorrectly because when you put the cone, the tip, uh, the pitot tube on this thing, the nose cone actually points way up in there and it looks funny. So I think it was actually just a mistake. So they made a correct one and put it in the box. Anyway, that's my best guess. The other item too, which is really kind of nice, is uh, this is magnetic and it just comes off nicely as we saw in the beginning. Uh, not totally sure why this is, but I think it's really just for transporting it because typically, you know, you have a pitot tube sticking out like this. Uh, on the nose cone of these planes like this, I'm tearing this kind of thing off all the time when I put it in my car or take it off. So I think they designed it to come off while you're transporting it so you don't break uh, the pitot tube off the front. While I was out at the flying field, I accidentally discovered why they put the magnet in the nose cone. I by accident uh, pushed my knee down on the pitot tube like you see here and uh, the whole nose cone came off instead of breaking the pitot tube off. So it's a real nice design feature they put into there uh, that you can remove it for transport and it's also there to help you to keep uh, from breaking the thing off uh, if you uh, lean on it accidentally. Here's a quick tip for you for the uh, nose cone on this airplane. Uh, there's two kinds of pitot tubes on model airplanes. Those that have broken off and those that will break off. So, and uh, mine broke off with all the takeoffs and landings I was doing. It's stuck in the ground at one point, and this uh, magnetic feature is nice because it just came off the airplane easily, but the pitot tube did break off. Uh, rather than trying to glue it back on, which actually I couldn't even find mine, but uh, it's going to just break off. What I decided to do with mine is just take some sandpaper, kind of lightly sand it off, and just turn it into a pointed nose cone, and then you don't have to worry about it breaking off anymore. And that seems to be a good uh, option for cleaning it up. If you watch the flying video on this airplane, you'll see I do a lot of takeoffs and landings uh, and touch and goes on grass. And one thing that I found is after doing a lot of landings with this airplane, uh, like I said, especially on grass, you'll find that this plastic piece may come out. And actually, it was, it was 
it came out quite nicely. There's just a little bit of contact cement that holds this thing, but holds this thing in place. But this entire rectangular uh, gear block just sort of popped out. And what I found that uh, worked real well was, uh, you know, just putting some CA down in there, uh, all the way around the perimeter. And there's four posts that are down in here. And uh, I just glued the thing uh, back into place right at the field. And uh, you'll see here that it's really rigid. And now that it's glued into place real tight. Uh, this wheel can take all sorts of abuse uh, to strut and bend like crazy and uh, not affect the foam at all. So if you have that problem with this gear block uh, kind of coming out unglued and it may very well do that, that's okay. Just CA it back into place and uh, you'll be good to go. Here's the layout of the battery compartment. Everything in here is uh, really nice and simply laid out. Uh, the batteries, I, I was using two different batteries. I was using 1,821 and 2,250 milliamp packs. This is a, an Enrich Power uh, 1,830C pack uh, that I also got uh, from Motion RC. And it fits really nicely in here. Now to get this thing to balance right, uh, I found that I had to push this 1,800 pack as far forward as I could. And the, the battery strap will hold it down nice and tight in there. But to keep it from sliding around, I found it best just to take a chunk of foam or something and just stick it in there to keep it from moving around. Now, uh, when I moved up to using uh, 2100 and 2250 packs, uh, you can overall see the, the difference here in the size of these, uh, but uh, uh, this is more of a generic pack, but this is a 2120C three cell pack. Uh, and the difference is, is that when I'm running this pack, I do run it all the way to the back because it is a little heavier and it will change the CG around being this uh, far from the uh, center of gravity. You notice here I did put this little notch in here and uh, that was to allow these the, 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 the wires for this uh, larger pack uh, to fit in there much better. And you do have a little bit of foam here that you can play around with and remove some if you need to. Uh, once you tighten down the strap, again, take the foam and I put it in the front side and that helps keep the uh, center of gravity uh, where it needs to be. Otherwise, everything here is pretty uh, pretty standard. This is the servo as it comes, as you saw earlier in the video. All the wires I kind of shoved back in here, and uh, you know I can connect my Dean's connector directly to here. Uh, I used this uh, Park Flyer uh, receiver back here with two antennas, and I ran the wires here because you want to keep your power wires really as far away from your antennas as you possibly can uh, to avoid any kind of signal loss. But this fuselage is so narrow that it is kind of hard to do that. So I ran the wires on this side of the fuselage on the left side and ran the antennas on the right side. But anyway, uh, the battery compartment is pretty straightforward, guys, and it's a real nice, simple layout they, they give you in this plane. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the center of gravity that they show you in the book is 170 or 172 millimeters from the aft edge of the wing, from the trailing edge, forward. Uh, and it's right about at this mark. And uh, one thing I found when you line that up with the airplane and you measure uh, 170 millimeters, 172 millimeters back from here, it actually corresponds with this little mark right here. And what I was able to do is just kind of balance the airplane on my fingers uh, right on this uh, sort of foam molding mark. And that really helped me uh, anytime I put a bigger or smaller battery in, I could balance the airplane with my fingers right on this mark and that gave me a good flying CG. Here's a suggestion I have for uh, Im improving the model a little bit. One thing I found was is the clevises in the horns, as you can see right here, uh, especially the top hole seemed uh, so much bigger, uh, larger than the pin. And as you notice here, when I put the pin in, uh, as you can see, there's quite a bit of play in here. And what I was finding was is my control surface, uh, like here we have the elevator, was moving around quite a bit, like much more than this. Now I flew the airplane and it flies fine, but I did find that if you can tighten up this gap, uh, it actually flies much more precisely. So uh, with that, what you could do is a couple different things you could do. You could get another uh, clevis with a thicker pin, okay, that'll fit in the hole better. Uh, or you can do what I did, which is actually a real simple fix. All I did was I took a, a drop of uh, thin CA and I put some in the in the hole, okay, and I actually filled in the entire upper hole here, and then hit it with some uh, accelerator, some kicker, and uh, just let it dry and let it get nice and solid. Then I took a real tiny drill bit that was about the same size as the pin here for the clevis, and I went ahead and drilled uh, uh, after the CA was dry, drilled through the CA to make a nice tight hole. And uh, the result is, by putting this back in here, you have a nice um, uh, uh, tight hole. 
And what I'll do is I'll take this thing off so you can kind of see how it looks uh, on my airplane. And uh, as I zoom right into here, uh, you can see, let me go ahead and tilt this thing up. You can see now I have a really small hole in there. And uh, let me zoom back out here a little bit. And when I take that pin and I go to put that pin in, uh, there's really like no play at all in this thing. It hardly moves at all. And you can just snap it in, uh, you know, put your fuel tubing back on. And now the play is uh, pretty much gone from this control surface. So anyway, guys, a uh, real simple thing to do. Uh, it's not necessary. Again, the plane flies fine uh, without doing this. But if you want to sort of tighten up uh, these clevises and these horns uh, and get your model to fly a little more precisely, uh, this little tip works out quite nicely. All right, guys, that concludes this video on the Rock Hobby 64mm F-16 Falcon from uh, Motion RC. Uh, one final note on this thing, uh, Rock Hobby is being produced by FMS, so, uh, which really explains why um, the quality and the flying characteristics of this plane are so good because FMS is just really making some, some, some really nice stuff, and they have been for some time. I've flown just about all their Warbirds and it's um, really one of the best uh, models probably in the industry. Uh, anyway guys, uh, this is exclusive to Motion RC, so check it out at uh, motionrc.com. Uh, um, again, I'll put a link at the end of the video for the uh, flying video uh, that you can just click on and go to. Um, and as always, you know, check out, uh, check out uh, rcinformer.com, uh, RC Informer on YouTube for this and other videos and uh, RC Informer on Facebook as well. Uh, anyway guys, uh, uh, once again thanks for watching and as always we'll see you next time.